I'm Gretchen Hirsch. I am a sewer, I'm a sewing blogger, I'm a pattern designer, and a sewing author. The great thing about sewing is it's really easy to get started. You don't need a whole lot of things just to get going, and you know, the skills to make a simple garment are pretty minimal, so you can get started pretty quickly. Putting in the time into sewing is really just refreshing and creative. When I'm sewing, I usually feel just totally creatively inspired. It's really a lifelong pursuit. Hi, I'm Gretchen Hirsch. I'm a sewing blogger at blogforbettersewing.com. I'm also an author. I wrote Gertie's new book for better sewing and Gertie Sews Vintage Casual. And I design sewing patterns for Butterick. Today, I'm gonna to give you the ultimate beginner's guide to getting started on a sewing machine. I know a lot of people tell me, you know, they have a sewing machine, it's been in the box for years, it's still brand new, they're scared to touch it, or someone gave them a machine, they don't know how to use it. So today, we're gonna to go over the basic parts of a sewing machine, how to get your bobbin, and wound and how to get threaded. And then we're going to do a really simple project at the end. So sewing machines can be very different. They, some of them have lots of features, some of them only have a few, but they all do the same basic thing. They make stitches on fabric. So they have the same basic parts. So I'm going to take you through those parts and then we're going to get started with the bobbin and the threading. So let's start over here. What you have here is called the hand wheel. This actually, you turn it towards you, always towards you, don't turn it away from you, okay? Turn it towards you, and what it does is it forms a stitch manually. You have the foot pedal, obviously, that makes the, the machine go like a car, but anytime you need to form a, form a stitch manually, you can just do it using the hand wheel here. So you also have a bunch of settings, lots of knobs and stuff on the front of the machine. On this particular machine, and on every machine, you're gonna have a stitch selector in some way. This one is a, a knob that turns like this and the stitches are numbered. The stitches correspond over here so that when you go to a number, you know what stitch you're getting by looking at this guide here. I'm gonna keep it on one because that's a basic straight stitch and that's what we're gonna be using today. And that's probably what you'll wanna get started with. It's the most basic, universal, uh, most used stitch. Most used stitch. <laughs> so we also have your stitch width, which is up here. Uh, you can tell it's the stitch width because it has a little zigzag that starts out really narrow and then it gets kind of wide. Uh, the higher number is a wider stitch, the lower number is a narrower one. Now when you're on a straight stitch, it's just a straight line, it doesn't have a width. So uh, we're just going to keep it on one setting and not worry about it. Uh, but when you're on a zigzag, you can change the width of the zigzag. This is your stitch length selector, okay? You can have stitches that are really tiny and close together, which would be one or even zero, but it doesn't move at all. The stitches just form on top of each other, which you might want for a buttonhole or something like that. Or you can go all the way up to four millimeters, which is a longer stitch usually used for basting or gathering or something temporary. Your basic stitch length is two and a half, so you're just gonna keep your stitch length there for now. The other things we have here are the bobbin winder right here. We're gonna get more into that in a little bit. It goes back and forth like that. This is where the upper thread lives, okay? We're gonna talk more about thread and how it works, but this is where your spool of thread that you're sewing with, that's where it goes. Over here we have, uh, this is the tension. Uh, it should usually be around four. I don't recommend fooling around with your tension a lot, especially not to start. Put it on four, keep it on four, and unless you see any tension problems, uh, don't mess with it. So down here, you're going to see the needle. This is where the upper thread goes. This right here is called the presser foot. It has a lever in the back of the machine or to the side of the machine, or to the side of the needle here that makes it go up and down. When you put the fabric underneath the machine, you put the presser foot down always before you start sewing, and that's what holds the fabric and makes it move forward. Right here, this little case comes off. This is called the bobbin case, okay? If you've ever seen a bobbin, you know it's like one of these tiny little spools that you put thread on, and it goes in that case and it forms a lock stitch with the upper thread. Uh, and one thing that we missed over here is the back stitch button. This is more like a lever over here. You can see it has a little, uh, a little symbol that shows the, shows like a little U-turn symbol over here, and it just means that the machine will stitch backwards, uh, which you do at the beginning and end of a seam to secure your stitches. Okay, so those are the basic parts of the machine. Obviously, you have your on and off button over here. The, uh, the power cord gets plugged in here. The foot pedal goes on the ground. But those are the basic things you need to know. All machines have these basic parts. Um, and they all form the same stitch, the same basic stitch, which is called the lock stitch. 
It's called that because it has two threads that lock together. Okay, you have your upper thread, which you're gonna have on a spool, which goes into this holder right here. Now you're also gonna have your bobbin, which I showed you earlier, which goes below the needle. So essentially what you're gonna have is two threads that come together, they lock together through the needle, and they form that lock stitch. Okay, so that's why it's very secure. It's more secure than just doing a line of hand stitching that goes up and down like that, because you actually have two stitches that lock together and form a really strong stitch. So two, li two lines of threads that form that really strong stitch. So let's talk about how to wind the bobbin. You're gonna take thread from a spool and put it on a tiny little spool like this. A lot of people ask why they don't sell pre-wound spools. Uh, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, different threads take different size bobbins. Um, and also because you always want your color and your upper thread and your lower thread to match your project. So you would need a really wide selection of pre-wound bobbins. They do sell them, but mostly in black and white. Um, so you always start by winding a bobbin so that you can have a custom match between your upper thread and your lower thread. All right, so you're going to put your upper thread on the spool holder here. And it goes on like this with the thread coming from below, okay? I always tell people that it's opposite of a toilet paper roll, which you always want coming over. It comes from underneath, okay? So you're gonna take the thread end and you almost always have a little diagram up on the top of your machine helping you to show you how to do your bobbin. It shows you that it needs to go through this little round guy right here. These silver discs are called tension discs. You need to actually snap the thread between the discs here, and you need to feel it snap into there and being held, okay? It needs to have a certain amount of tension created, otherwise your bobbin will not wind correctly. Your thread's gonna come back over here to the bobbin winder, which is what this little guy is called. All right, grab your bobbin, and you'll see that you have little holes on the top and bottom. You're gonna take the end of your thread and it needs to go through the middle of the bobbin and up into one of those holes, okay? And then you're gonna pull the thread out from the top like that. Put the bobbin onto the bobbin winder and click it on, you hear it click, and then push it over to the right like that. Next thing you need to do is pull out the hand wheel, okay? It, it comes away from the machine like that, and you hear it pop. And that engages the bobbin winder. So when I start, when I press down on the pedal now, the needle is not gonna go up and down, it's just going to make the bobbin motor wind. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm gonna take on, I have my foot pedal under here, I'm gonna press down on it just like I'm driving a car. I'm gonna hold, very important, you wanna hold on to this thread end, okay? And once you have it start wrapping around the bobbin a little bit, you can cut, and you wanna cut really close to the bobbin to get rid of that thread end. And now you can just keep winding. And the cool thing about um, machines is that it kind of automatically fills the bobbin evenly, so you don't have to worry about it. The other cool thing it does is that it has a sensor over here that makes the bobbin stop winding when it's full, okay? So you can see it's starting to skid a little bit. That's because it's getting full. And now it's stopped because it's full. I always find that really cool. So now you can take that off, pull the bobbin away, and cut your thread. Okay, now you have a wound bobbin. So I want you to just put this aside for a minute because now we're gonna thread the upper thread. All right, so you're gonna take the thread out of the tension disc. And most machines, um, pretty much every machine I've come across, uh, especially modern machines, do have a numbered guide for the, uh, the sort of trajectory you're supposed to follow to thread your upper thread. This is the thread that goes into the needle. Okay, so take the end. My first thing is that it needs to go under this tab. It needs to click in here, okay? So you're listening for that click. There's a number one and an arrow, which means I need to go down through this slit. And pretty much every machine I've worked on has the same sort of like U-shaped motion here. Uh, so two make, tells me to make a U-turn and go back up here. When I'm up at three, I need to make another U-turn. But what I have right here, and I what I want you to pay attention to, is this is called the take-up lever. It's very important. There's a hole in the, uh, the very front of the take-up lever. It's very important that your thread goes into that hole. There's an opening, like a little slit, that goes from the back of the lever into the front. 
So I can take the thread, and I always tell people that you're, pretend you're like flossing your teeth, okay? You're holding it like this and you're gonna put it between the teeth, but instead, take it from the back of the slit of the take-up lever and click it into the hole there. If you're having problems with your machine and it, you're getting like a wad of thread on the back of your machine, it looks really scary and weird, most of the time the problem is that your thread has not gone into that hole in the take-up lever. Um, it's, it's very, very important, trust me. Okay, so now you're gonna go down to number four, which is telling me go to go down to the needle. There's a hook that I want to put my thread behind there, and now I'm gonna thread the needle. This machine does have a needle threader, a lot of the um, more recent machines do, but I sometimes find it easier to just do it by hand. So go from front to back through the eye of the needle. Now the, you have this long thread at the end. This needs to go through the presser foot. There's a slit in the center of the presser foot. It needs to go through there and put it towards the back. Now your upper thread is threaded. Okay, so now we're going to put the bobbin in. The bobbin, uh, hold it like this so it's facing you. Uh, the thread tail should be hanging off the left of the bobbin. I always tell my students it should look like a P, and you remember that because you can say it's P for perfect, okay? So now that you have it in the correct position, you're just gonna drop it into the bobbin. This is called a drop-in bobbin case. It goes in horizontally and lays in flat. There are some that go in straight, um, but this one goes in, and the, those are called front-loading, kind of like the washing machine. Okay, now this needs to go through this little slit in the case. There's an arrow showing me that I need to put down my finger onto the top of the bobbin. I need to hold it in place, take the end of the thread, and thread it through that slit and click it over to the left until it can't go any further so that I know it's secure in there. Okay, the bobbin is put into the case now. There's one more very important thing you have to do before you can sew, and that is to connect the upper thread and the lower thread. They're now not working together. This bobbin thread needs to come up through this hole in the metal throat plate and meet the upper thread so they can start forming that lock stitch. To do that, grab the end of your upper thread. You're gonna take the hand wheel, pop it back in from winding the bobbin, okay? And now you're gonna turn it towards you to form a complete stitch manually. And the way you know you formed a complete stitch is by watching the take-up lever. You want it to go all the way down and then all the way back up. So it's in its upright position, as a flight attendant would say. So it's gonna go all the way back to the top. I wanna see that little lever at the top. And now if I tug on this thread, you can see I have a little loop that's come up between the presser foot slit. And what I wanna do there is I will just take something like the blade of a scissor or something that I can stick under there, take the blade, put it between the legs of that little loop that came up, and then sweep your scissors over to the left, like that. And now the bobbin thread is on top of the machine. Take both your threads so that they're together through the slit of the presser foot and to the back. Last thing to do is to take this bobbin case cover and it has to click back on and back in like this. And now we're ready to sew. So now that you know how to thread your machine, we're gonna do a really quick, simple project, which is making cloth napkins. I love to make cloth napkins, especially since there are so many fun cotton prints out there. I will often make them in a variety of prints so that I have a bunch of coordinating napkins, or not coordinating, whatever you like. Um, and you can see I, of, I often use uh, scraps left over from dresses or things like that so that I can have a little a coordinating napkin with my dress. So what you need to know is you're gonna to need to cut squares of fabric for your napkin. Um, your squares should be about 18 and a half inches by 18 and a half inches, so a, a, a perfect square. Um, you can cut them or you can tear, quilting cotton tears very easily, so you can make a snip where you want and tear it like that. Just make sure that you actually iron the edges so that they're not all curled and uh, wrinkled. All right, so now that I've got this, what I need to do is just hem the edges so that the edges are nice and finished. So I'm gonna show you an easy method for creating a little narrow hem on a napkin. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start stitching. And we're gonna stitch um, using the edge of our presser foot as a guide. You're going to line up the edge of the fabric with the edge of the presser foot like this. And we're just gonna start stitching you don't need to worry about back stitching or anything like that. We're just going to go forward. And when you're feeding fabric, you want to use this hand so that it's flat on the bed of the machine and it's helping you feed the fabric through. 
Your right hand, I kind of use it to pull out the fabric like this to hold it taut so that it doesn't wrinkle as, it, as it's going through the machine. Like that. Uh, when you finish sewing a seam or a line of stitching like this, you always want to manually raise the take-up lever so that it's to the highest position, so that the needle is all the way up, raise your presser foot, and then pull the fabric out. If you're experiencing resistance with the thread coming out of the machine, it means that your take-up lever isn't all the way up. Okay? I did that on one side. We're going to do it on all four sides. I'm going to show you one more. So just the same thing from the edge of the fabric to the other edge. I'm going to start here, lining up the, uh, the torn edge of the fabric with the edge of the presser foot. Uh, and just stitching along that edge here. The stitching is going to form a guide for us to press the fabric. And it's going to make a nice uniform edge there. So I'm raising that take-up lever again, raising the presser foot. Um, and I didn't say this at the beginning of the seam, but you always want to lower your presser foot before you start sewing. If you uh, start sewing and your fabric isn't going forward and your fabric is forming a huge nest of threads under there, it's probably because your presser foot isn't down. So when you put the fabric underneath the foot, always lower that presser foot before you start sewing. Okay. So you're going to do that around all four sides of the napkin, but I'm just going to show you those two sides. The next thing we're going to do is go over to the iron. I'm just going to scoot on over here. You're going to take your, uh, take your napkin and use the stitching as a guide to help you, okay? You're going to turn the fabric to the wrong side, okay? And this, the wrong side is the side where the print is not as vibrant. Uh, it looks like a little more faded, right? So I'm using the, the stitching that I did as a guide to help me turn this. And what I want to see here is I want that stitching to be just to the wrong side, okay? You don't want to see the stitching on the edge of the fabric and you don't want to see it on the right side, okay? It needs to be to the wrong side of the napkin. All right, so do that the entire way across. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn that fold in a second time, like that. Okay, so I have one fold. I'm going to refold to turn it towards me and press again. Okay, so I'm just doubling up that fold and pressing. So now you can see I have what is going to be a really nice narrow little hem there. And I'll often put a couple pins through my hem like this as I'm pressing just to make sure it stays secure in the next few steps. So this is just a narrow hem. A hem is just a, a finished edge of a fabric, okay? It's usually turned in uh, twice. It can also just be turned up once and that edge can be finished, but you'll see a hem at the bottom of pants, at the bottom of a skirt, um, at the bottom of curtains. Um, any finished edge like this um, this project has four hems, one on each side, because it needs to be finished on all four sides. Okay, so at this corner, I'm just going to do the same exact, same exact thing that I did on my first side. And I have this little corner heel here I have to deal with. So when I turn that up, I'm just going to turn it up over the first hem, like that. I'm just going to show you how to deal with this corner here. So what you want to do is just make sure that all your ends are folded in, that nothing is kind of sticking out there. And you're going to want to put a pin through to hold the corner in place like that. Okay, so now it meets nicely and that corner is going to look nice and finished. All right, so you're going to do that around all four sides of the napkin. And I have one ready to go. I've done that. Here it is. So you can see here I have it pinned folded, turned in, the corners are the way I want them, all the way around the edge of this napkin. And the only thing we have left to do is sew this hem down, okay? See how it's up like that? Now we need to actually sew along that edge there to hold it down. So let's go back over to the machine. And I would recommend you start not right on a corner, but kind of close to one. Let's start on one long side about right here. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to be stitching 
And let's just talk about lowering the presser foot one more time. So anytime you put the fabric underneath the foot, you get it positioned exactly how you want it, and then you lower the presser foot. It's like a hand that holds it down. Then there are feed dogs in the machine that pull the fabric through mechanically. So we're gonna be stitching right along this edge of the fabric. You can find a point on your presser foot that helps you line this up nicely. Okay, so you're gonna go forward a couple stitches. Now you're gonna use your back stitch button to go backward a couple stitches to secure the beginning of the row of stitching. And now we'll go forward again. Okay, so one thing that I really wanna stress is that you do not sew over your pins. So when you get to a pin, like here, right before it gets to the presser foot, you're gonna take it out. I like to use a wrist pin cushion, so I have it handy to put my uh, pins back in my pin cushion. And the other thing I really wanna talk about is how to get a nice straight line while sewing along an edge like this. Um, I, what I'll recommend is finding a spot on the presser foot. So on the inside of the presser foot where you're matching the edge of the fabric. Um, so that you're not just watching the needle go up and down, which can you know, make you a little bit dizzy, actually. Um, you wanna just follow the edge of the fabric. Now, here I'm getting to a corner. So what I want you to do is instead of trying to use the foot pedal to get right to the corner, use your hand wheel so that you land with your needle down. So it's just at the uh, edge of the next fold of fabric. What we need to do now is turn a corner, and this is called pivoting. You always pivot with the needle down. So you wanna make sure that you have the hand wheel and the needle turned so that it's all the way deep in the fabric. And now, once the needle is holding the fabric, I can raise the presser foot and turn the fabric towards me like this, so I'm now going in the opposite direction. And I formed a 90 degree angle with my stitching. So again, just you know, taking out your pins as you go and just making sure that you're stitching close, as close to the edge as possible. Another thing you can do is use the edge of the presser foot again as your guide. Um, I usually prefer to look over on this side of the edge. and you find a guide point over here, but it's up to you. Okay, again, I'm gonna use my hand wheel here. You get much better control with the hand wheel rather than the foot pedal. So when I get into a tight spot like that, I wanna use the hand wheel. Okay, I'm pivoting. So I'm gonna raise my presser foot. I'm gonna turn the fabric towards me to turn that 90 degree angle. And now I'm gonna keep stitching in this direction. And this is great practice, just doing these long stretches. Um, one of the first things I used to make when um, I got back into sewing um, about 10 years ago was I loved to make curtains because I would have these really long stretches where I'd be sewing hems like this. And I felt like I just really got to get a good feel for my machine and get back into sewing in a way that was really relaxing and you know I didn't have the pressure of fitting a garment to me or anything like that. Okay, pivoting. So I'm gonna raise my presser foot, flip the fabric towards me again and go in this direction. So yeah, you'll start to kind of feel like you're gaining more confidence as you get into doing these long seams here and feel like you're getting more control with the foot pedal. That's really important, you know? You can, you can go really slow with the foot pedal or you can go super fast. I know my young students always wanna go really, really fast, um, but you have much less control that way. So practice doing both, you know? See if you can go really, really slow try going really fast, see if you have a lot of control. Um, but it's really important to be able to go slow when you need to. So just gaining control, gaining confidence is what these little projects are all about. Okay, I'm almost back to the beginning. I just have one more little pivot to do. So I'm gonna, again, use my hand wheel. I'm gonna turn my corner. And now I'm coming back to where I started my stitching. So what you wanna do in this case is overlap the two lines of stitching by about a quarter inch. And so that they're right on top of each other. 
And once you do that, then you're going to do a couple back stitches again. Okay, and now you're going to stop with your uh, take up lever all the way up, which means that your needle's all the way up. Raise your presser foot. Now you're going to, I like to keep these little clippies close to the machine, and then trim very close to your stitching so you don't have any loose threads hanging off. All right, and that is a napkin. So the final thing I would recommend doing is just doing one last press. Uh, you see that the, the hem can look a little bit rip, rippled, not bad, but anytime I make something, I recommend giving a nice final press just to make sure it lays flat and that you feel really happy and proud of your finished product. And now you can make a whole set of these, have a whole matching place setting. And what you can do is just fold it like this. And this is just gonna look really cute at a place setting. So that's just a really simple project. Once you've got the basics of using your machine, just make a whole bunch of napkins and really get comfortable with using your machine. Thanks so much for watching.